Welcome to week 17. We are in chapter 11 for the next two weeks. Chapter 11 is on chemical reactions. Good stuff. We finally get to see real chemistry in action. Yay! We have talked about writing and balancing chemical equations for quite a while. Now we're going to put names to the face, right? There are five types of chemical reactions. We're going to look at two and a half today. Synthesis, decomp, we'll begin single replacement. Next week we'll do the rest. This week, there is a note study guide and your homework. There are lots of videos to watch this unit. You'll like them. We're going to watch four of them as breaks. And there's a class song. See it right here? The minute you came to this class, we will listen to that in a few minutes. What is the general format of a chemical reaction? What's involved? Very good. Good, 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 good. Danny and Sam have exactly what I'm looking for. Reactants, arrow. Products. Officially, it should look like this, because most reactions are going to be reversible. Right? Very good. Next, what does it mean to balance an equation? So when I ask, is this equation balanced, what do I mean? Very good, Emily. You have the same number and type of element on each side of the arrow in the equation. Lily, what type of reaction is this? That is a synthesis reaction. That is correct. It forms one product. Emily, what else is it? Combustion. Yeah. <laughs> Remember last week I showed you two videos where things exploded to make water? Yeah. It is also a combustion reaction. We've already talked about synthesis and decomposition. Go ahead and read this quickly, please. Okay, single replacement reactions. A more active element will displace a less active element that is already part of a compound. A metal may displace another metal. Non-metal may displace another non-metal. Remember here, metals are the cations. That means the positive ones, listed first or second? First. Correct. One cation replaces another. Then the non-metals are the? Anions. And they are negatively charged. What about zinc and nitrate? Are they part of the reaction? No, they're not part of the reaction because they don't change or combine. That's right. So read the blue. The other ions in the reaction were not involved in the reaction, therefore we call these spectator ions. You've heard me say this throughout the course. I've been saying don't be a spectator ion. You need to participate. When I call on one student, mm -hmm. you all should be participating. Don't be a spectator ion. Ah, Anna, you're next. I want everybody to go get an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper, preferably blank like computer paper. Give me a thumbs up if you have it, and let me know. You're going to be my spokesperson. Sorry, I'm going to rip something out of my notebook. It's going to be That's fine. <laughs> I was getting all teary-eyed. That joke was terrible. I never promised any of my jokes would be any good. Everybody better be doing this. No spectator ions. Isaac, get your paper. Turn your paper so that the long way is horizontal. And now fold it in half. I'm going to make a nice seam. I need two perfect halves. John, go ahead and read this for me. Metals react with oxygen in the air to produce metal oxides and give off heat and light. This is what we mentioned earlier, and you've seen a couple of reactions now of this. When a metal reacts with oxygen and combusts, it's a synthesis reaction, but it's also a combustion, and that's what we show here. So the one you saw last week, I showed you in the video, and it's the same video down below. Magnesium combusts with oxygen to form a white powder, which is magnesium oxide. It is a synthesis reaction. How many products, John? One. One. That's a synthesis reaction. But it is also a combustion reaction because there's fire and it uses up oxygen. You understand? Yes. Great job. And that's the end of the lesson. In a typical lesson, there are always going to be practice and review slides like this. Quick check, like a little practice quiz. Students will be given an assignment that they can work on, and then the answers are provided on the next slide. Reference tables are also provided in the course, so students do not need to memorize things like the periodic table. Here's a chart of polyatomic ions that they need to use throughout the course. Again, they do not need to memorize it. Various charts will be provided for them, along with an equation reference sheet. They don't have to memorize equations either. They just need to know how to recognize them and incorporate them into solving a problem. The lessons end just how they started, going over the objectives, and the assessments and assignments that are due in the upcoming week.